Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Fractal Bitcoin. Welcome to today's Bitcoin news video. I'm Chris. Let's get right to the Bitcoin price action. Uh oh, it's a red day. Oh, no, we're down. Actually, what you're seeing on the screen is uh, the daily candles since February. So this is about a month and a half's worth of daily candles. And you can see we've just been going up and to the right. But today we're down a little bit. We actually came all the way down to 68,600. But now we're back up to 71,500. And our all-time high is... Oh, we actually hit an all-time high today as well. Oh, I didn't realize that. 73,000 and $27. That's our all-time high, a new all-time high today. So this is great. It's exciting. This is the bull run. And you know, if we pull back a little, it's not a big deal. Let's continue on with the news. Just in, Bitcoin overtakes the Swiss franc to become the 13th biggest currency in the world. Oh yeah. We're taking over currencies left and right. <laughs> Here we go. And MicroStrategy, by the way, if you're if you're not sure if you should be buying right now, look at this. MicroStrategy just bought 12,000 Bitcoin for $821 million. And their average price per coin was $68,477. So this guy right here, look at him with the laser eyes or those lightning eyes. I don't even know. But he's buying... He's bullish. <laughs> it's so good. And the, one of the other uh, pieces of big news today, rapper Drake posts Michael Saylor's Bitcoin video to his 146 million Instagram followers. And Michael Saylor said that Bitcoin will eat gold in an interview with CNBC on Monday. And yeah, so look, this is this is what we call adoption, right? This is... And I know Drake has been into crypto for a while, I think. Yeah, and he's Canadian. Who knew he was Canadian? Anyway, that's uh, what, so what this means is that a lot of normies or a lot of no-coiners or pre-coiners are going to learn something about Bitcoin from Michael Saylor, which is, he's probably the best guy to learn from. And Fred Krueger, you didn't know Freddy Krueger had a Twitter handle, but he does, uh, he says, in 50 years, using fiat for money will be about as ridiculous as seashells or y yap stones. <laughs> I, I, I believe this as well. That we're going to look back at fiat currency, you know, after having Bitcoin for a, a considerable amount of time, we're going to look back and go, oh my God, this is insane. You mean the government can just print money and do whatever they want with the money and give it to their rich friends? And it devalues everyone else's money, all the normies, all the regular people. And then you can just go to war because, yeah, we can just print money. We're going to look back at fiat and it's going to be ridiculous when we look back. And here's, uh, this is a little post about Grayscale because Grayscale, uh, you know, they also have a Bitcoin ETF like all the other Bitcoin ETFs that came out Um Actually, Grayscale had something else and they converted it to a spot ETF. But now they're opening a, they're going to launch a Grayscale Bitcoin mini trust. And I think this is, oh, and it's expecting to have a competitive fee. Because one thing about Grayscale, the ETF is their fee is 1.5%. Everyone else's fees for their spot Bitcoin ETFs is like 0.2%. And so everyone's like, why does Grayscale have this, you know, fee rate that's crazy compared to the others? And so now, and I don't know why they don't change it, but now they're going to launch something else. So anyway, this is just more proof that uh, everyone's getting involved and they're, they're moving and shaking in the Bitcoin space, right? This is amazing. This will blow your mind. Way back when, you could exchange one U.S. dollar for 1,578 Bitcoin. Today, you can exchange one US dollar for 1,300 sats. And we're still early. So there's going to be a day when a dollar might get you, you know, five sats. I mean, it's amazing. But anyway, this was back in 
You can see here, December 28th, 2009. <laughs> wow, don't you wish you bought 1,578 Bitcoin for a dollar back in 2009? Yeah, almost no one did though. I think in 2009, there was very little happening on the Bitcoin network, even though it launched on January 3rd, 2009. But yeah, so people are saying Bitcoin is a bubble. Everyone always says that. But here is the Financial Times reflecting on that. It is extremely unusual for a bubble to burst and then recover to reach new heights so quickly and suggests that something real and sustainable is going on. Yeah, it suggests that something real and sustainable is going on. Yeah, that's because it's not a bubble. It's an adoption curve. <laughs> look at this curve. It, this is like if you look at the curve of internet usage, right? From the early 90s till now, this is what the growth in internet usage looks like. Exactly like this. It's not a bubble. It's an adoption curve. And so now the Financial Times are realizing that. Hopefully, well, at least they're beginning to realize that. And this is some news uh, from India just in. The U.S. ETFs are to be offered to institutional and retail investors across India by cryptocurrency platform Mudrex. So, yeah, look, you, you know, I don't know where India stands these days. They India flip-flops back and forth on Bitcoin. But, I mean, they're going to have to embrace it like every other country is going to have to embrace it. So, apparently... Indians, Indian people are going to be able to access the ETFs. So there you go. There's a lot more money that's going to come into Bitcoin. And it's probably going to motivate India to do their own thing, right? Get their own uh, ETF or whatever they, whatever they can do. And here's a story about El Salvador. Um, El Salvador will be able to pay off the IMF if Bitcoin hits $100,000 per Bitcoin. So yeah, apparently, like most other countries in the world, the El Salvador owes money to the IMF. And but if Bitcoin hits 100k, El Salvador will be able to pay them off. And here's a quote from billionaire Tim Draper: "They'll probably be the most attractive country in the world to go live just because they embrace Bitcoin." So yeah, El Salvador seems to be killing it. But this next thing I want to show you is a little disturbing, though it's not confirmed. And, we, you know, this isn't like confirmed news. This is just a post that I saw that was shared. And here this guy, John, shares it. He says, apparently El Salvador immigration officers during an impromptu visit to verify the address of a residency holder yesterday asked if they can manually see the person's Bitcoin balances. And you have a bunch of people in this thread. I'm going to link to this thread. I link to everything that I'm telling you every every video. But check out the thread. A lot of people are saying this, you know, they're asking for the source. We still don't have a source for this news. And people are jumping the gun. You can see right here, this comment here. People jumping the gun thinking it's the government, you know. They want to just take shots at Bukele. But it could be gangs, right? It could be gangs going door to door pretending to be the government. And it could be administrative overreach, but we don't know yet, okay? So that's what I want to say. We don't know yet. Um, I hope actually Max Kaiser maybe can chime in on this, um, but I don't know what he knows either. So, all right, let's move on. This is pretty interesting. The private key to a full Bitcoin is engraved into this sculpture. Yeah, here's the sculpture here. I'll en enlarge it in a second. But the private key to a full Bitcoin is engraved into this sculpture. Everyone can see it. It is not hidden. But no one on the planet alive today will be able to spend this Bitcoin. It's time locked until block 7,140,000, approximately the year 2144. <laughs> I don't even understand that. I've never heard of a Bitcoin being time locked. Is that possible? I mean, is it possible on the Bitcoin network? Or is it, I don't know. Anyway, what a, what, a, what a story, right? It's pretty interesting. There it is. All right, let's move on. And here's more, uh, some of, a little bit about Clown World for context. 
And you wonder why Bitcoin and gold are at record highs. Yeah, look at this. Uh, step one, we want inflation below, not step one, but phase one. We want inflation below our 2% target. Then the next phase, inflation should reach 2% over time. Okay. Third, the 2% inflation target is aspirational. Oh, 4% core inflation is fine. Yeah, this is how the government is literally scamming you. And this is propaganda, right? It's This is all lies and propaganda. First, inflation should be below 2%. Then if it's okay, if it's 2%. Then 2% is aspirational. Oh, we wish we could have 2%. And now 4% is fine. This is so stupid. These people just change their rules. They change the game. It's propaganda. That's all it is. And this is what, this is how your money is being devalued by this type of propaganda and, and the corruption behind it. Uh, this is actually a good image here. This shows the growth of Bitcoin the gain in value of Bitcoin versus the loss of value in the U.S. dollar, right? So from, 20, from 1913, the U.S. dollar has lost about 96 or 97% of its value. So the dollar is worth much less now, much less. And look at Bitcoin. It's worth much more, and that's going to continue happening. This graphic right here shows you in, in, in an image, shows you the difference between fiat and Bitcoin. And which one would you rather hold? Would you rather hold a dollar that loses, what is the, I think they said the dollar right now is losing, what, 15 or 20% of its value per year? Or 10%? Something like that. It doesn't even matter exactly what it is. If it's anywhere in that ballpark, you're being scammed out of your money by the government, and Bitcoin solves that. And a little bit more context, Biden administration resurrects the 30% Bitcoin mining tax in a budget proposal for 2025. Look, we all know they're going to try and do this. I don't know what we can do. We can fight them as much as we can. But just the more Bitcoin you own, the safer you are against all this garbage. Speaking of garbage, <laughs> what a segue just in. Riot Platforms partners with Reformed Energy, turning waste from landfill sites into energy for Bitcoin miners. This is amazing. They're using landfill garbage to create energy to mine Bitcoin. And, and, and the main or the corporate media propaganda is that Bitcoin is evil because it use, uses too much energy and Bitcoin is killing the earth. It's exactly the opposite, right? So I hope more projects like this come where we can use, you know, so think about it. Bitcoin not only is a more sound money and it holds its value and it empowers individuals like you and I, but by the process of mining Bitcoin, we can actually fix and remedy a lot of the problems from the fiat world. Like... These landfills. How cool is that? If people really understood this, they'd be jumping up and down saying how great Bitcoin is. But I don't know if they do. Yeah, because it's a myth. Bitcoin mining is wasteful. The reality is Bitcoin mining makes waste useful. <laughs> right? And this is another article or another post about landfill waste can be converted into off-grid electricity. Man, let's go. Now, this is funny. When you read the Bitcoin standard and you only highlight the important parts. <laughs> uh, for those of you listening to the audio-only podcast, literally er almost every word on the page is highlighted. The, the whole book is highlighted except for this tiny, and he's not even done highlighting. Yeah, reading the Bitcoin standard is is a must. Uh, definitely look into it if you have not read the Bitcoin standard. Wow, it is really, it'll open your eyes to what Bitcoin really is and, and what it is in terms of history and monetary policy and usage and store of value, everything. Uh, and apparently, Jack Dorsey on Noster today proclaimed 
that it's International Sign Someone Up to Noster Day. Okay, so, <laughs> hey, look, I love Noster. It's one, of, it's one of the only decentralized platforms in the world that is completely censorship resistant, you know? But anyway, Noster, if you're not familiar, Noster is a protocol, but there are clients. So if you're not on Noster and you want to participate in international sign someone up to Noster Day, go to Noster.com slash clients. I'll link to it below. And these are the clients. And the client is how you access the Noster protocol. But the main clients, there's some web clients, there's iOS, and there's Android. And if we look, uh, iOS, this Damas app right here, it's an app. It's almost like it, it's in the neighborhood of Twitter or X. It's kind of like a Twitter slash X type of app, but it's a little different, obviously. But it's running on the Nostra protocol. And on, on Android, um, Amethyst is the one that I mainly use. So Amethyst, if you're on Android, you can download Amethyst and get a free account. If you're on iOS, download Damas, get a free account, and boom, you're on Noster. Definitely find Fractal Bitcoin on there. I'll follow you back. Uh, then you can connect a Lightning Wallet. There's a lot you can do, but start just by getting an account. And just to end today, one more happy dog. Look at how happy this dog is. This dog is going for a walk and he can't even walk. He's just literally jumping. And this is one of those things you can see the dog is smiling, right? Like I can literally see the dog smiling. And then look at this one. Wait, wait, he, now he's up close, but look at this guy. <laughs> he's so happy. He's just hanging out, having fun. Man, dogs are so wonderful. This is our website. This is fractalbitcoin.com. Check out the link on the top here. It says join our locals community. Click that and join our locals community. It's free. Come hang out. Say hi. And don't forget on Fridays, we do the Bitcoin panel live stream at 4 p.m. Eastern. On Fridays, 4 p.m. Eastern, the Bitcoin panel. I gather a bunch of Bitcoin experts and we talk about Bitcoin. And it's, it's an hour, but it's a lot of fun. Definitely join the stream and say hi. But that's going to be it for today. So thanks for checking it out. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel or if you're on Rumble, follow the channel and join our locals and uh, also comment. I love getting comments from you guys on YouTube and Rumble and everywhere. So thanks for watching and I'll see you in tomorrow's video. Bye.